Hey everybody, welcome to my fourth custom race in Gran Turismo 7. As you can see, I've got my Mustang once again because I'm trying to uh, buy some upgrades for that to do its run on Raudex Lap Attack. The 70th anniversary edition, or the 70th anniversary celebration for the Corvette has been completed. So I figured since I've pretty much been driving nothing but Corvettes and a couple of Pontiacs since this uh, reboot started on the series, I'd try out something different, and we're doing a Ford Mustang. Upgrades are almost done, but right now we just got to do a custom race. I might do one of these as well, but... We, we have too much performance, or I should say my performance is too high, and obviously that one thing all the way on the left, uh, we can't use a Mustang on that. Highway 1, oh wow, alright. I don't think I remember this part of Grand Valley. <laughs> yeah, let's do lap. We'll try 20 laps, just to get not too crazy, but... A good understanding of what we're supposed to do and put everything on professional, wherever that is. Yeah, here we go. I kind of wish that with car category, you would allow a better range of variety here instead of being focused on these five. Like, it would be nice if you could do like N500 or N700, like everything else below the GR section. It would also be nice if uh, you did random and you could select cars from the garage, but I think you can only change if you do this. As you can see here, everyone has the same car that I do right now. We're going to change it up a little bit. I think we'll put in uh, my 1989 Z01 if I can find that. Where is it? Did I already pass it? I'm not seeing it anywhere. Where is it? Oh, there we go. I also want to add the Super B, but we're also going to put in a couple of uh, Pontiacs as well. I'm going to put the Firebird there. This will be the Super B. I think uh, this might be too fast. I really want to put in my C8 Corvette, but you can see it weighs less and it's got more horsepower, so obviously my Mustang is not going to be able to keep up with that. But put this in. See if that's able to keep up. That'll be an interesting uh, chase. As will this. Because despite having more horsepower, I think the top speed's about the same. And just for shits and giggles, we'll add two of these. Get another Mustang here. A DeLorean. I saw this. I think if I get enough upgrades later on, then we'll be able to join. But right now, I don't think it's going to be a good idea. Literally putting this in. We'll leave two of the other cars. We'll keep them as Mustangs. Or I should say the same Mustang that I've got. I want to see how this goes, though. Look at that. The Pagani Huayra, definitely, or as I like to call it, the Vomit. When you hear Jeremy Clarkson making fun of the name, you'll understand why I call it the Vomit. Maybe this. Now this is amusing. I decided to make this the last place car because it was also the first place car up here as you can see. Now that everything's ready, we shall hit apply. And 
now we're going to change the weather. Yeah, let's do that. Let's leave that there. Alright, so this is going to be normal, and then we'll have it here. I don't think you can put in rain with these clouds like this. But it would be nice if you could. I mean, pretty much your only option here is sunny or cloudy. We'll find out soon, I guess. Let's just double check everything else. That's good, that's good. Oh, this has to be here. Leave that alone for now. Put put this at two. I mean, I know I like having it realistic with just the one. But at the same time, I want to see some more excitement as opposed to the last three races I've done. Might as well put this on light as well. Alright. Everything else will be off here. We are ready to start. So this is pretty much a repeat of the Michelin race I did in my 1989-01. When I finished doing my race with the Mustang at Daytona, I um, recorded the race at Michelin in my Corvette before uploading the Daytona race. So if anyone had any requests in the off-road race in my truck, my F-150, and you left any requests on there, that'll be done next. Then again, people don't usually comment on these videos, so I probably won't have to worry about any requests being ignored or refused. reason I say refused is because there's some people out there that make these idiotic things like, hey, drive a Beetle and go against these 15 Lamborghinis so you can get last place. Fuck no, I'm not doing that. Maybe race... Oh wait, why did I do this? This is what I wanted to check, but I don't think there's anything else here to do with the weather. Again, it would be nice if I could add rain. But, uh, I think we'll have to wait for another update. Oh, crap. We're already going to the left side of the road. The pass my Mach 1. Which you may have noticed, I painted to look like Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. Whoa. This is exciting. I like how how this track looks so far, but I seriously got to switch to di different tires. I'm surprised I didn't go off the cliff there. This is like the Matter and Horn track in Gran Turismo 6. Like, you could technically go out of bounds because they have this really steep jump or this steep hill where if you go airborne off this one hill, you can go over this one barrier. However, with the way the game is set up, you actually don't go over. You just hit this invisible wall and you stay in the grass. I bet you there'll be at least a few online servers here and there where people are role-playing as cops. But they seriously got to bring voice chat back so you can talk to other players. It just defeats the purpose of doing a cop server if you can only communicate with text. If it's the terrain of this track or my tires as I mentioned earlier I am using racing medium I should switch to racing soft
Oh, crap. I didn't even think I was going to be able to go all the way over there. Oh, the engine and the hot rod I just passed. That sounded awesome. They say the car is from 1963, but really it was built in 1933. I think because of all the modifications uh, that were done to it. But when you look at... What the fuck, Pagani? Well, like I was saying, when you look at the description of the Roadster, it actually says that the modifications were done in 54. So it's kind of weird that they say that it was built in 1963. I probably shouldn't have done the e-brakes there. That was stupid. But I also like, too, how they have this set up in California. When I looked at the map, I think it might have been somewhere around Big Sur. But some areas, like some parts of the terrain, kind of remind me of San Francisco with the bullet chase. And it's funny I say that, because this dark green paint I have in my Mustang, you may have noticed, it actually is based off of Bullet from 1968. <coughs> Passed another green car, the Super B. That would probably be my dad's favorite car if he was watching this. He's always been a big uh, Mopar guy. breaks too early there, but I also realized, damn it, damn it, fuck, it's a good thing I didn't go, god damn it, that other Mustang, I need to spin that guy out. I should have switched to my Roblox Camaro. Oh, that was cool, too. I just noticed that one sign I went underneath. It had the uh, Grand Valley logo. I think it said Grand Valley Highway, too. That was pretty cool. There it is again. All right, Mr. GR4. Let's see how you like getting spun out. Screwed myself there, but uh, at least he got what he deserved. I can actually hear the nitrous again. We're almost empty. I'd like if I could refill my nitrous bottle when I go into pit. It's only lap three, but if I keep getting all this mechanical damage, I'm gonna have to repair it or go to the pits. Change my tires. We're not gonna refuel though. I might regret this decision, but I was just tired of driving around with all the mechanical damage. I don't even know why I put that on, to tell you the truth. I guess to try and make things even with the other cars.
I wonder if the two Corvettes are still in first and last, like I assigned them to be. I don't remember who uh, the drivers are of the cars. But uh, I guess we'll find out soon if I can get back to the front. Oh, fuck. Not again. For once, I'm actually regretting putting these guys on professional level. Probably should have gone with intermediate. Or stuck with intermediate. It looks like I already caught up. That was a big goof there. I can't even see what I'm doing now. Holy fuck. Maybe my next race I'll do a one-on-one -on -one with a uh, GTO and the Super B. I'll be driving the Super B and I'll put the uh, computer in the GTO. Damn, will you stay still? I mean, or don't stay still, otherwise you won't be going anywhere. Just don't lose any grip when you go around a corner. Right, that's better. Sorta. Of. This, on the other hand, is not. I'd actually like to see the car go over the edge and then you do a repeat of this one uh, Sega game where you're doing rally cross and an announcer shouts, Game over, yeah! What is wrong with this thing? I, mean, I know I said it's the tires, but I I seriously could have sworn that we'd get more grip here. Or maybe because of professional level or because of all the other cars I chose to go against, they probably sabotaged my ride. Drift wasn't too bad. I think now we're going to put our brakes on here. Getting back to 10th. That's good. Got to pass this Corvette, and then we'll be in 10th. Funny enough, at the start of the chase in uh, Bullet, one of the core or one of the cars that you see not involved in the chase, you know, just minding its own business, actually is a uh, C2 Corvette, but it's a black 1966. And there was also a GTO that you see later on. A Dodge, the Dodge Charger actually goes past it while trying to avoid uh, the, the Mustang. That, on the other hand, was actually a uh, dark blue 68. But they do look similar to the 69s. 
I think there might be some minor changes on the hood. If there were any changes at all. If you want to talk about changes, you should see um, or compare the 68s and 69s to the 70 uh, GTO. If I have to be honest, though, while the 69s are cool, I kind of think the 70 looks better. And they kept it like that for 71 and 72 as well. I think the final GTOs were uh, 73 and 74. Good day, Mustang copycat. But to be fair, that was my idea. I made him get a Mustang just like mine. It's kind of like Starsky and Hutch. I think I remember uh, one episode from season one. I think the pilot, too, where someone copied or had a Gran Torino just like the one Starsky and Hutch had. Pilot's the only episode from the show I've seen. But I also have the video game as well as the uh, movie <clears throat> with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. <coughs> I think I'm turning into my friend Mike. Because I don't have a sore throat, yet for some reason I always have to cough. If I really want to be like Mike, I got to drive a Dodge Neon. What is going on? Fucker. Okay, that did not help. I don't know if it's the surface of the track, but something about this thing's like undrivable. I didn't have this much difficulty on um, the road course version of Daytona or Daytona itself, even though that's pretty much just a circle. Like there's a few other tracks I've done similar to this with all these curves here and there, and I didn't have any difficulty spinning out or trying to keep control of the car. At least I didn't crash into the wall there. Thank God for that. Okay, that wasn't quite what I intended there, but it was still pretty fun to do with those traffic cones. Halfway on fuel, so I think by lap 14 we'll have to pit for that. Or maybe we can refuel on lap 12, because I feel like with the way these tires are going, by lap 12 we'll have to get them changed. The question is, though, can I catch up with the other cars in front of me? There's only six of them. Now, some of you may be wondering, why would I blame the track for my car spinning out? I mean, I know that might sound ridiculous, but sometimes actually the surface of the road can actually affect your car's handling depending on how hot or cold it is. That was actually an, a factor that they pointed out in the uh, clash at the Coliseum a few months ago in Los Angeles. I got distracted by my phone. I got a text message with a bunch of numbers. I'm in one of those groups where... Oh, fuck. I am in one of those groups where... You have like 10 or 11 other people... 
in the group where you're being texted by this one guy. It's regarding my work at Quick Check, but this is for the White House store, which I might not be going to anymore because my new store along Interstate 78 on Perryville Street, which they call Hampton for some reason. I don't know if it's actually in the town Hampton itself, but I have noticed um, the store is almost ready to go. I went in there a few days last week, and I'm going to be going back this week to do some work to make sure the store is ready for its grand opening. Oh, we're going to lap a Nissan. All right. I thought it was an R34 Skyline or just a GTR, but for some reason they call it the R35. Interesting. Makes you wonder what the R36 will look like. And I did notice the ZR1 um, we passed there. I'm going to assume that's the one in first place. Unless, of course, we pass the other ZR1 that's still in first. And I'll just, I'll be impressed if that actually was the Corvette that I put, put in last. That was a pretty interesting drift there. I didn't think I could do that in fourth gear. And again, I am losing shred on my tires. I can see that the uh, rear tires are halfway until ex being exhausted. This is actually how they got Hans RX-7 to drift in Fast and Furious 3 because the car didn't have much horsepower. They had to decrease the tread on the tires so it would have less grip. Oh, fuck. I'm not going forward, damn it. Maybe uh, 12 might not be a good time to pit with these tires. I think maybe after I get towards the finish line on this lap, I'll uh, replace those tires. I mean, I probably could go a few more, but with the way this thing's slipping and sliding, I'm not taking any risks. interesting if there was an arcade version that allowed you to fix your tires automatically if you went off the track like they had some uh, retread zone if you go into the dirt all right that wasn't too bad there's the Mach 1 and uh, my other bullet Mustang which I did not mean to hit I am sorry oh the Mach 1 is actually a 19th all right I thought it would be in third. That would be interesting. I didn't see any of the cars that passed me while I was in pit road earlier, so... It's going to take a while to get used to if I see another car that I already passed. and They're actually still behind me a lap down. That was my horn. I was kind of hoping to... Do the nitrous, but I forgot that's R1 and it's empty anyway. That was good. I honestly didn't think it was going to be that easy to pass the Alpha. Yeah, three and a half laps. Might as well refuel while we're at it. 
I mean, I see if we refuel now anyway, we'll have more than enough fuel to finish the race, so might as well. Sorry if you heard that. That was just me playing with this string on this one light. And it hit my headset, so I apologize if you heard that. I like how everyone else, though, after they finish um, with the pitting thing, they just stand around and stare at each other and do nothing. It would be nice if they congratulated themselves or high-fived each other. That would be nice. A good teamwork, guys. We're going to help them win. There's a lot of stuff that has been uh, moved around. They're just laying either on their side away from the track or there was a thing I saw after leaving Pit Road that was actually in the middle of the track, but I don't remember hitting that thing, so must have been another car. We got nine laps to get back to the front if we can. I mean, we were never in the front to begin with, but we got third, so that's not bad. Right now we're in seventh. There's the ZR1 again. Passing the Mach 1, that's a lap down. What are you doing? He slowed, or he was trying to move to the left to cut me off for some and push me into the wall. there. There's the AMG. We passed twice. Surprised that's somehow in the top five. Because I tried driving that car earlier and not the best. I was actually thinking of selling that thing. I see the other green Mustang. I put a third Mustang, just like mine, further in the back of the pack, but it would be interesting if it caught up and got in the top three with me and um, the other Mustang. Like, all three podiums are held by three Mustangs that look exactly the same. There might have been a situation like that with the Ford GT in the... Uh, 24 hours of Le Mans, either in 1966 or 1967. Which reminds me, I gotta see Ford versus Ferrari. The movie came out in 2019 and I still have not seen it. My DeLorean. Or as my friend Mike put it, uh, Gold Members DeLorean. I think only five of those were ever made. I know one of them is in Los Angeles at the Peterson Museum. And then there's another one at another museum in Reno, Nevada. There's the Alpha again. Imagine if James Bond actually drove one of those instead of an Aston Martin. That's kind of why I painted that thing silver. 
But I also remember the um, 1963 Giulia Sprint Special in 4, 5, and 6. And when I first saw Cars 2, that, that car just made me think of Finn McMissile. I mean, I know he was supposed to be based off the Aston Martin DB5, but when you see some parts of the Alfa Romeo Giulia Sprint Special, there are some parts of that car that makes you think of Finn McMissile as well. It says I'm 14 seconds behind the leader, so there's no way this Super B's in first. It would be nice, though. I mean, I'd have an easier time getting into the lead, but unfortunately, as you can see, it is in 17th. I could have sworn it'd be going faster. I mean, if I was driving that thing, I'd probably have it going this fast right now. I wonder if they got rid of all the upgrades I've done. Or if they just have the driver going slow like an idiot. And flooring it at fifth gear when he's supposed to be in, like, second or third. So again, this car may not be in first place, but we are getting closer. Oh, he's pitting. Perfect. We have eight seconds, and we can just get right in front of him. There we go. Ah, it was the ZR1. What do you know? So that other ZR1 we passed earlier, before we pitted, did come back from last place. How about that? See how fast this Roadster's going. I'm surprised this is uh, also a lap down in, like, 15th place. Whoa. It's pretty cool, though, to see these two fours going side by side. Oh, damn it. I thought he was going to be on my left. knows what he's doing, though. He's got a pretty good line. I'm just trying to take it slow so that I don't uh, lose more tread on my tires. I got a pretty good lead right now. I'm eight seconds at the front. I don't want to screw it up. I'll probably help this other roaster catch up and get out of 16th and take 15th away from this roadster in front of me. I love doing that, just going across the sidewalk. And while I am tired of this car losing control, just something about drifting before getting onto that bridge. It's just something about it feels really satisfying. I don't know. Do I see fog rising from the ocean? That would be interesting. Or maybe it's just the uh, reflection of the clouds. I probably shouldn't have let go of the brakes there. We still have an eight-second lead, so nothing to worry about. Okay, make that seven. Still close to eight. Back to eight. I saw another orange car. I don't know if that was the GTO or the other ZR1. Find out soon, I guess. Can't 
tell from this angle. Oh well. Okay, yeah, that's the, uh, neither the GTO or the ZR1. That is the R35 GTR. I miss the Skyline name, though. I think once the GTR started production, they, uh, renamed the Skyline or made a different version of the, of the car or something different, and that became the Skyline. You type in 2007 Nissan Skyline and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's different from the GTR. To tell you the truth, I'm surprised that car's in last. Here we go, I think now we got it. Nope. Nope. It sucks when you're trying to do a turn and you think the car can handle it and then it starts going sideways. So you passed the ZR1. And now you're taking first place for me. I should have seen that coming. me of the ending of uh, Talladega Nights. Only difference was uh, Jean Girard was driving a Chevy and Ricky Bobby was in a Ford. Now it's pretty much the other way around. I just hope I don't do a repeat of Carl Edwards and uh, throw a bad block that'll make me spin out of control. That's how he got wrecked by Brad Keselowski at Talladega in 2009, and when he was driving Toyotas for JGR, the number 19 car, he got wrecked by Joey Logano at Homestead. Could have won a championship, too. There's the GTO. Or some people like to call it the GOAT. Imagine if I was actually trying to follow the speed limit and stayed on the right side of the road. Oh, that was a good recovery. I thought it was going to go into the, the sand there. But that yellow Stingray is trying to fight the ZR1 now. I have to tell you the truth, though, I am surprised that the ZR1 was made during the C4 uh, generation. I thought it was only a C6 thing. But I really like the Z06. Um, or one of my favorites, anyway. When it came to the uh, C5 generation, I always liked seeing the Z06, and then... that Whoa, that was a good drift. But yeah, they also had the Z06 for the uh, C6 generation, and then... That got replaced by the ZR1, and then I think also the C7 had a uh, Z06 version at one time. Around 2015, if I remember correctly. Well, if I lose to two Corvettes, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I'd rather lose to these Corvettes than uh, anything else I passed. Especially that other Mustang and the Pagani that spun me out for no reason. 
And what do you know? We got a third Corvette. I should have done something like this for the 70th anniversary uh, celebration of the Corvette. Just have as many cars as I can racing each other. Although that might seem a little pointless, though, because when you look at the time laps, uh, the lap times I got during the Route X Lap Attack series, and you see how so uh, slow some of the cars are compared to the others, there may not be any uh, purpose in having them go against each other an actual race. But I remember um, one time I accidentally called a uh, Corvette the Corn Vet. And we accidentally joked, we joked about it because the car was yellow like corn. And then uh, once we did that, I decided to continue the joke even further, and I saw a yellow Mustang, and I decided to call it a mustard. I bet you other kids did that too back then. I know this might seem stupid, but I gotta try and uh, stay out without changing my tires. Stay in front of this Corvette if I can. I mean, I'm probably gonna lose all my spots either way if I do pit, so... Just do the best I can and see what happens. Oh, crap. Whoa. I actually didn't think I was going to recover from that. Oh, God, not this song. Holy fuck, what was that? It was either my mom or my tenant, and they must have dropped something. I should have pitted while I still had that eight second lead. Oh, look, another Silvestri. I remember uh, racing against an A Silvestri at Michelin, and I joked around and said that it was Alan Silvestri, the uh, composer for Back to the Future. He did the uh, soundtrack for that movie. I thought it'd be funny if I had him in a DeLorean. I mean, you can change the driver name, so... Maybe I should do that next time. Well, we made it this far. I think one more lap wouldn't hurt. I mean... It's not like we're going sideways or doing 180s or 360s. Nothing wrong with third. I mean, I'm just glad I'm not in 17th like I was earlier. I just gotta remember to get racing soft tires, replace these mediums, and Hopefully next time if I do something like this in this car, I can win next time. Seriously, that Corvette, that yellow Corvette is doing a really good job of drifting. I don't like this song either.
surprised I got in the second there. I get first, I doubt it, but always next time. Maybe I can try the reverse section. Forty three minutes, wow. No, that didn't feel that long to me, to be honest. But sometimes when you do something that takes, like, 40 or 50 minutes, it always feels like it's shorter for some reason. Still, we got up to 50 grand with $43,000 pay, so... That's not bad at all. Very first time in the series that I did not win, but I, I'll gladly take second place. Thank you guys for watching this video, and hopefully I'll see you next time.